What's going on for you? How can I help? Um, so I, I have a few questions, um, but mainly I am working through, I think logical reasoning is definitely harder for me. At first I struggled with logic games, but I've kind of seen uh, the two of those switch. And now I have been improving on my logic games. However, I have not been improving on my uh, logical reasoning. I've kind of been staying stagnant. Um, and it's, I notice assumption questions are very difficult for me. So how, how do you approach when you're plateauing, how do you approach that um, and not, not get discouraged or burnt out, but also how do you approach those assumption questions and, and, and really like elevate your score instead of just keeping it where it is right now? I think I'm really worried about that. And um, on top of that, I have some test anxiety. So I'm worried about when I get to the test panicking and thinking, oh man, for the longest time I wasn't able to you know, improve my scores, I stayed stagnant and, and, and kind of not doing as, as well as I would hope to. Sure, sure. So lots of questions there. Let's unpack them <laughs> bit by bit. So one of them is plateauing. Yes. So when you reach a plateau, it's time to change your approach. And okay. that could involve finding a particular weak area and focusing on it, or maybe adopting a new strategy altogether. Okay. It's hard to say without knowing more, but you did mention logical reasoning, assumption questions as a, as a particular area. So let's right. start there. Right. So I think when I approach those assumption questions, I look at the question stem and then I look at the stimulus and then I think, okay, so here is uh, the conclusion. Here's the evidence. Uh, and then I make my assumption, my prediction, and then I look at the answer choices. And what I've been noticing is my assumption is different than the answer choices. And, and from there, I'm like, oh, I panic because I worry about timing. Um, and I just, I, I don't get the answer right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we got to improve your confidence on assumption questions and then also improve your understanding too. Right. So with logical reasoning assumptions, there's actually two completely different kinds of assumption questions. Okay. There's necessary assumption and sufficient assumption. Have you heard about those and the difference? Yes. So I know that when I'm looking at a question stem that says uh, the assumption required is typically a necessary assumption. Um, and I know, I think it's like, if the question sense says something along the lines, like, uh, if the conclusion is logically drawn, that can be logically drawn, if the following is assumed is more of a sufficient based assumption question. Yeah. So sufficient enables or allows the conclusion to logically follow okay. and as an assumption required is necessary in order for the argument to work, but it may not be enough to guarantee the argument. Okay. So very different perspectives there. Okay. I think of necessary assumption questions as being a very specific kind of must be true question okay. where they're not really opening the door to new information. They're just saying, if everything in the stimulus is true, if that argument is valid, then what is a thing that would need to be true in order for that argument to work? Okay. So do you approach them in the same way you would approach a strength in question where there's not new information being introduced? Um, that's well, strength in questions actually do introduce new information. Okay. Strengthening questions say, which one of the following, if true, would most strengthen the argument? So when they say, which one of the following, if true, would most X, Y, Z, they're saying, take all five answer choices as being true. Okay. If you assume all of them were true, which one would have this particular impact in the case of strengthen to strengthen the argument? But necessary assumption is actually not new information. I okay. think of this like an inference question. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I should change my approach to how I look at these questions. Yeah. Okay, so like a must be true or an inference type of question approach. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And so you talked about predicting. Mm -hmm. With necessary assumption questions, there's often going to be something new mentioned to the conclusion that did not appear in the evidence. Okay. And so it needs to be the case that new thing in the conclusion relates back in some way to the evidence in order for the argument to make any sense at all. Okay. So that's a starting point for predictions. You may not always predict it, but I would start there. Okay. Um, and then I think my other question that was in there uh, when we first started was, you know, how do I kind of approach test day, the week leading up? And then, you know, if I have bad testing anxiety, how do I approach that with confidence to say like, okay, I know I can do this. I've studied for months now and, and I've got this. Sure. So when are you taking it? October. So you got some time, about two and a half months. Right. Okay. And have you taken it before? Uh, no, this will be my first time. I take practice tests. Uh, that was my other question that I had for you is how many should I be taking a week? Uh, I don't want to overdo it. I want to make sure that I'm actually learning and practicing my skills. Uh, 
but I also want to make sure that I'm timing myself. I'm getting my endurance ready for the exam. Um, so I also had that question for you as well. Sure. So once you have a strong foundation, then I would introduce the timed exams. Okay. Maybe you could do a timed exam a week until that point. But okay. if you haven't totally gotten assumption questions down, for example, really, again, necessary assumption for sufficient assumption, mm -hmm. then logical reasoning is not going to reflect your fullest potential because there's still that gap in understanding. So I wouldn't rush to do timed exams yet. Okay. But if you really want to, to work on pacing and endurance, I would say do maybe one a week. Then once you've got a strong foundation, then increase it to twice per week. Okay. Um, now, with I regard think... to anxiety, there's the score preview. Okay. Have you heard about that? No, I haven't. So there's this new policy LSAC introduced just last week saying that starting with the August LSAT and every LSAT going forward, if you've never sat for the LSAT before, there's a new score preview option, meaning you can see your score before deciding whether to cancel. Okay. Great. And you should, that's, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And you should never really cancel your score anyway, unless something went terribly, terribly wrong for a fact, right. but it's still nice peace of mind to have that. Right. Oh my gosh. That's, that's great to know. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Those were my questions. Uh, primarily, I think that I, I really do worry about, uh, you know, getting to that test and then freaking out with the test anxiety that I have um, and just knowing how to prepare um, because I think I, you know, I didn't start out great when I first started. I started with a low score in the 140s for my diagnostic test. Um, and I've grown uh, about like nine, nine, 10 points, but I still have a lot of work to do. And so I worry that by October, you know, what can I be doing to, to get my score to the mid high 150s? And, um, you know, do I just focus solely on logical reasoning because that's where it is my weakest or do I kind of break it up? Um, I notice when I'm away from something for too long, then I'm, then I spend more time reviewing than, uh, than I feel like I should, uh, instead of expanding on what I already know. So how would you approach that? Yeah, it's good to mix things up. And my study plans go into this more helping you build a foundation in every right. section of the exam. So I wouldn't say we only talked about logical reasoning today, but I wouldn't say only do logical reasoning. If you notice a weak area in games or reading comp, drill that on the side too and mix okay. it up doing some individual timed sections in games and reading comp too. And then if you're doing one exam a week, automatically you'll be mixing it in. Okay. Now for doing the one exam a week and then building up to two exams a week, potentially uh, with, you know, the current situation of COVID uh, I'm taking it in October should I be doing a full exam or should I only be doing three sections like the flex is right now? I would do at least some three section exams just because yeah. it's pretty likely October is going to be a flex. Yeah. I don't want to tell you to do no, no zero five section exams just because on the off chance it was a five section test. I want you to at least have the, the taste of that endurance, but the typically announced test, whether it's a flex or not six weeks prior. So okay. Anytime between now and six weeks prior, I would still be focusing primarily on foundation and okay. individual timed sections. So I don't see it being a huge issue. I would do a handful of three section, a handful of five section. And once they announce that it's a flex, which I think they will, then of course you could stick with three sections only. Okay. Okay. That's great. That's good to know. I want to make sure I have enough endurance, but I also don't want to be overdoing it if I, if I don't have to. Um, I don't want burnout, obviously. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, I know. I, that's one thing I do worry about is burnout. I've been studying since the beginning of May. So I have until October and I just want to make sure, I think we talked about this uh, a few days ago and you sent me a little study schedule. Uh, if three to four hours a day is good enough, if it's not good enough, uh, if I need to be studying more. Um, I'm not an average student. I really need to put the work in. Um, I'm, I, I can't just you know look at, look at an exam once or twice and, and be good to go. Um, so I have to do that work. So do you recommend since I am that type of student to put more than four hours a day in, uh, taking, taking one day off, taking two days off a week? Uh, what do you recommend? You could do five, six hours a day. You could, okay. as long as it's focused and it's not overburdening you. So if you want to take breaks, take breaks, you should take breaks. Really. I would typically right. say maybe do two and a half hours before lunch, two and a half hours after lunch. And that could be it. And then okay. within those two and a half hours, you take frequent breaks scattered throughout. Okay. Okay. Like a five-minute break here or a 10-minute yeah. break there? Definitely. Okay. okay. All right. 
Well, thank you so much. This was super helpful to me. Um, I sometimes I feel like I'm going at it alone. So it's great to just have someone to be able to kind of give me some good feedback on this. So I really do appreciate your time. Of course, glad to help. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, definitely, I would say moving forward with how I approach those questions, those assumption questions, because I do, I worry about them uh, constantly. Um, and I'd say the, like, moving forward with the exam, with the test anxiety, you know, the practice test once, maybe moving up to twice a week. Uh, those two were, were huge questions that I had for you. Um, I, I don't want to feel like I'm falling behind the, the pack uh, by not doing an exam or two exams a week. Uh, but I also don't want to just constantly be testing myself because I feel like I'm not going to truly learn that way. Uh, and so that was a huge question for me that you answered today. Great, Maddie. Well, keep in touch. Let me know if you need anything moving forward. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.